Welcome back to SocialScienceSkills.com and my series on collecting data. My name is Grace and today I'll be walking you through how to distribute your Qualtrics survey using email. Um, this is a function that's built into Qualtrics and is really useful for situations where you know exactly who you want to take your survey and you already have your their contact information because you've communicated with them or you, a group that they're a part of um, has shared their information with you, um, or if you're following people over the course of time and you enrolled them at the baseline of your study and collected their contact information then um, and got their okay to get back in touch with them for follow-up down the road. So if you have people's email addresses and um, want to share a Qualtrics survey with them, this is the way to do it. So head on over to Qualtrics and I will meet you there. Let's get started. So we're back in Qualtrics and we're getting pretty familiar with this page. This is the My Projects page. Um, and this is the survey that we set up a few videos back and have been working on. Um, if you need the brief introduction and kind of general overview of Qualtrics, I will link to that video up there for you to check out. Today, we're actually going to explore this contacts page. So click on over there. And we haven't added any contacts yet, but I have a contact list saved on my computer as a CSV file. Um, there's also the option of just typing data into Qualtrics um, but I'm planning on making another video on um, how to create a contact list that's easy to import um, and compatible with Qualtrics, including ID numbers, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, we'll click on this. I'm going to name it Social Science Contacts. And I haven't set up any folders yet because we only have one survey. Um, and not a lot of contacts, obviously, so I'm just going to choose Uncategorized and click Next. Um, so here I will, since I have a file, I'm going to use this option, but you can also um, add contact information manually by filling in these fields, or if you have a survey where you collected their contact information, you can use that option. But I like importing from a file because you can include other um, information like an ID number without having to program it into your survey. So I'm going to click Browse. I have an Excel version that I created originally, but it's best to use a CSV format file. So I saved it as a CSV file, my Social Science Skills Contact Spreadsheet. I'm going to open that. And you can see here that 26 contacts were imported. And if you scroll down, you can actually see, um, I used a random name generator, so this isn't anyone's personal information and they're all fake email addresses, but um, this is what's in the spreadsheet that I uploaded. Um, so you can see Qualtrics automatically identified the headers as the variable names. Um, I created a this consecutive ID number, and um, it's important to use these um, exact variable names um, as they're specified up here in the file requirements section um, for the best, uh, the smoothest experience. Sometimes if you have data in cells that you can't really see, like you just accidentally entered a space or something in the rows below your contacts, um, that can mess up the import. So if you have trouble with this step, I would recommend um, deleting the bottom rows just to make sure that they're totally clear and trying again. But this worked for us this time and we were able to check out our that our data imported correctly. There's actually like 26 contacts in here, so it just gives you a sample. But we're going to click Add Contacts and it'll show us that it's working on it. We can click view to just triple check that everything worked out. 
I can scroll down and see all of these. I also added myself and my social science skills email address here so I can um, send myself a copy of any of the emails that I send out to my participants. Um, I'm going to check out, I think I might have, um, two people have this email address accidentally, but that's okay because they're fake. <laughs> okay, so now that we have done this, we're going to go back to our survey in the projects tab. So click on projects. Select the survey you're distributing. And... As you remember from that first video, we I briefly introduced you to the distributions tab. Um, so we'll go back over there. And last time we used the anonymous link, we just copied and pasted this. And this is great if you're just trying to really broadly spread your email, your survey um, by sharing it on social media or um, like you could use a QR code on posters or something like that. But this is anonymous and so you won't be able to, unless you ask people, you won't be able to like <clears throat> Um, But this is anonymous so you won't be able to um, connect any contact information that you already have with the responses unless you ask ex for it explicitly. Um, so the best way to send out a survey if you know exactly who you're sending it to and have their contact information is through this emails option. So I'm going to click compose email and it's super handy because they send, they give you a little bit of um, text to start with. Um, but I'm just going to work my way down from the top and fill in all of these. I'm going to use contacts from my library that we just imported. You can see down here the name social science contacts and you can at a quick glance see who is in your list. So you can either you can choose a subset of this group of contacts um, but we're just going to use the entire list for now. So now that we've selected the contacts that we want to send it to um, you can check out that the from um, items are the way that you would like them. I'm going to leave the from address as is, um, but the if anyone replies to the email, it'll get redirected to um, my email, which is great. Um, you can decide when to send it. I'll just use do send now. I will call this survey. Might want to make it something more catchy than that, but um, include the name of your program or what you're studying or anything like that. If you have a message that you've um, already created or used in the past and saved in your library, you can um, select that from here. I'm going to show you how to customize the messages according to um, some of the data that we have in our contact list. So I'm going to program this to address each um, participant with the, by their first name, um, which makes it a little bit more personable and they may be more likely to read the email and respond. Um, so I just typed in hello and then I'm going to insert piped text using data from our contacts that we already imported. So um, since I used the proper um, string of characters to label my first name variable, if I just click recipient first name here, it will um, pipe in their first name. Put a comma and I'm going to get rid of this because I want them to um, use the specific link sent to them from the survey. Um, by using the e link sent to them in their email rather than the anonymous link, their name 
from the contact list will be associated with their response and the data that they submit. They'll also only be allowed to take the survey once. So use that. And you could write a message. If you have consent information you need to include, that would be great, but give them some background. Um, maybe it's people that have already signed up and expressed interest in your survey, so you could say, thank you for your interest in the survey. Please complete it using the link below. Okay, this is good for now. Um, you can also sign it out, sign off. And you can play around with the formatting a lot here too. But this is good for now. Um, in future videos, I might talk to you about how to um, further customize the survey link to collect specific data um, from your participants, um, like passing over their ID number and those sorts of things. You can send a preview email, um, but since these are all um, fake, I'm just going to click send now. And since I included my email in the contact list, it'll send it to um, myself so I can check it out and see how it looks and um, take the survey. There we go. You'll see here a confirmation of when and who you sent it out to. Um, and you can also track how many people um, took your survey. Um, so you can see how successful distributing your survey this way is and follow up later with people who haven't followed the link and haven't completed the survey. So this is really great. It allows you to have a lot more control over um, who is accessing your survey and taking it. Um, and you can also use this same email function um, to send out thank you messages or reminders um, to your contact list. So Qualtrics has a lot of um, great functionalities in this area. You can also click on distribution summary to see um, a record of who has taken your survey so far and um, who you and people who have taken it via email will appear as a different um, category. Thanks for watching this guide on how to share your Qualtrics survey with a known audience using the email distribution feature. Um, I hope this was helpful. There's so much that can be done in Qualtrics using um, contact lists and embedded data and email distributions and reminders. Um, so I think this is an area that I'll probably make um, some more in-depth videos on. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or have questions, um, please let me know by liking it or adding your questions in the comments. And if you don't mind subscribing, that would be really awesome. Um, I love to see that people are enjoying these videos and interested in the content. Um, also head on over to Instagram to follow me at social underscore science underscore skills. I post brief videos over there on um, short little tips um, that you can incorporate into your Qualtrics survey and I also um, post an update whenever I upload a new video. Um, so head on over there if you're interested and yeah see you next week. Bye!